So I've seen in the comments on previous videos discussions on what oil people use and what is best for their engine. So in this episode I'm going to run through which oil to use. I won't be testing finding out what oils perform better or worse but what I will do is show you why I have chosen the oil I use and why you may be using a different grade oil. I'm also going to be doing an oil change on my van which is the 600 mile oil change since the engine rebuild. The oil I have chosen to use for this complies with a recommended VW506 and it's the Castrol Magnatex 1040. Previously, before the rebuild, I was using 1540 and this was because it was an old worn engine with over 250,000 miles on the clock. So, as a result, I preferred to use a slightly thicker oil. And now, with the new engine, it doesn't need to be as thick. However, depending on when and where you are in the country, the grade of oil may change. So, on screen, what we're looking at now is an oil temperature chart. And this will make it easier to explain. So, here where I live in the UK, it doesn't get that cold. Maybe at the worst, minus five degrees. So for the cold months, the oil grade ideally wants to be at least 1540, as this is within the oil temperature range. The colder the climate, the thinner the oil. So if I was in Scotland over winter, I would want to be using something like 530. So what about summer, I hear you ask? Well, in the hotter months, I look at the upper temperature limits of the oil. So let's say 40 degrees is the maximum summer temperatures, then I want to be using 540 or 1040 minimum. But to be on the safe side, you could go thicker up to 1050, 1060, 2060. But, you know, which is for more extreme temperatures. So looking at this chart and knowing if I'm going to be driving in the extreme hot or in the extreme cold, then I'm able to choose which oil is best for me. So personally for me, 1040 is great. I need my oil to cope in hot and cold because my oil service is yearly. So in the winter, minus five, and in the summer, maximum 35, although record breaking 40 they say on its way. But either way, I'm gonna go by the chart and also it is oil that complies with the VW specifications. So I am happy to use this oil. So this is the 600 mile oil change from the new engine, from the new rebuild. And basically it doesn't really have to be super expensive. I've got a cheap oil filter, which I grabbed from Euros. The oil I got from Amazon. I think that was the cheapest place to get these two. I think I paid 52 pound for the two of them. I think it was and I think other places I did actually see in euros and it's over 40 pound for that just for one of them so you know 30 quid cheaper from Amazon not that I'm advertising them or anything but I do get a lot of products from Amazon Prime anyway moving on the oil filter I'm just going to smear some oil around the rubber lip and then screw it on I'm not going to pre-fill it oil pressure will build up and fill that in no time at all and then once it's all done, I'm not going to bore you recording it all. Once it's done, we'll get it up and running and I'll see you once it's done. Right, so it's all done. Happy days. But this is incredible. I just noticed um, because I've, I've had the air con running while the engine's running. The engine's been running for about 15 minutes and that is how cold my air con is. Look at that, that condensation build up on that pipe for the aircon. And inside the van, it's ice cold in there. Absolutely freezing. Yeah, so it's all, it's all running now. That's the oil change done. I'm happy with that. Hopefully, you know, this has helped you decide what oil you want to use. You know, uh, I guess some people didn't even realise that you could, you know, that is how oil is graded with, by temperatures and you know, there's other things that come into account as well, but, you know, this is just the basics for your oil. Uh, but I will leave a link down below for a very interesting article for you guys to read, um, titled How to Choose the Right Engine Oil. 
but it's from machinerylubrication.com and I will leave a link down below because it's really interesting so good little read if you're ever into um, wanting to see what oil you want but we can see underneath now I'm just checking to make sure that there's no oil leaks the cardboard's there to to catch any oil leaks because obviously I'm changing the oil and there's a lot of patches of oil already on the ground so we've got the cardboard there you can see there's no spider running across but yeah so I've had it running for quite a while now there's no drips no drips of oil everything seems to be good because I did have a little oil leak beforehand and I wasn't able to get to it to tighten it up while the oil filter was on there because the oil filter was in the way from the pipe that goes from the turbo so the oil return pipe from the turbo down to the down to the dipstick casing mount there's a, a weird union bolt kind of thing and it seemed to be leaking from there so I've re that's why one of the reasons why I wanted to do the service early so I could swing off it and see if I could tighten it I did tighten it a little bit um it, it probably moved maybe 45 50 degrees on the bolt so hopefully that's enough to tighten it and prevent that oil leak but you can see here where well, you can see in that video it's yeah it was quite quite bad that little well it was only a little bit but it seemed to be always looks worse than what it really is so there we have it uh, thank you very much for watching hope you found this informative and until next time take care stay safe and god bless